This is an official civil defense film produced in cooperation with the Federal Civil Defense Administration and in consultation with the Safety Commission of the National Education Association. My name is General Charles Edward Braddock of the British Army. We all know that the walking undead or zombie is a very dangerous creature. Since they may attack us at any time, we must be ready for them. It is in the interest of your government that you, the public, know what to do to survive in this unpredictable climate. This short documentary is the first part of a three-part series that will help you prepare for a zombie outbreak. Today we will explain the physiology and psychology of the zombie, basic weapon tactics, and evade and escape strategies. A human being is transformed into a zombie by fluid from a zombie entering the bloodstream. This can occur in many ways, such as a bite or zombie fluids coming in contact with an open wound. The virus then travels through the bloodstream into the brain, transforming the living cells into a new and independent organism. This is Billy. He's been bitten on his lower arm. Because of the distance from the bite wound to his brain, it will be hours before he becomes a zombie. This is Billy's dad. He's been bitten in the neck. Because the wound is very deep and close to the brain, he will become a zombie very soon. <laughs> Better get out of there quickly, Lee. <laughs> if you cut off a zombie's arm or leg, it will not be stopped. This is because the zombie feels no pain, so cutting off a limb will not stop a zombie from trying to hurt you. Because a zombie does not use its internal organs, the heart does not pump blood, and so cutting off limbs will not allow you to bleed a zombie to death. Decapitation will stop a zombie from the use of its body, but the head will remain alive. The only way to kill a zombie is by destroying the brain. These are some of the various weapons you may encounter when engaging zombies. The ideal melee weapon should be light easy to use and easy to repair. Large bladed weapons are an excellent choice. This is Farmer Joe. He's unarmed against approaching zombies. He needs a melee weapon with a long reach and a large blade. The scythe is an excellent choice for farmers. This is the most modern and versatile firearm you can carry. It's light, easy to use, Heavy caliber and its semi-automatic function prevents a panicked citizen from emptying the entire magazine in a few seconds. And it remains accurate over short and long distances. Look out, Billy. Good work, Billy. But what happens if your gun jams or you twip and are unable to fight? And we all know that girls can't defend themselves. So what can you do? There are two types of zombie outbreaks. The first type of outbreak will be detected by our defense forces working hard to protect you. When they detect zombies, a siren will sound. When you hear the siren, do not panic or flee the area in a vehicle. Instead, walk to your nearest emergency shelter. Don't be like these rebellious children. 
<laughs> Don't you know that a zombie can smell you from over a hundred yards? Hiding behind a tree simply won't do. If you see a zombie and a siren hasn't been sounded, find a policeman or civil servant and alert them to the danger. Good work, Tom. But what about Farmer Joe? He's unarmed and outnumbered with no emergency shelter for miles. Don't worry, Joe. <laughs> Our scientists have the answer. Because a zombie does not pump blood, its muscle deteriorate rapidly. This disables a zombie body from performing any agile movements such as jumping or climbing. From here, Farmer Joe can wait to be rescued or look for a more permanent safe place to hide. Where are these permanent safe areas? Let's take a look. With years of experience in tracking and monitoring the spread of zombies, we have identified the safe zones. Forests, abandoned buildings, and cemeteries. It's due to the lack of living people in these areas that makes them such great places to hide. Of course, in a zombie outbreak, several things could go wrong and you may be forced to escape from your safe house. When evading and escaping zombies, avoid traveling by car. We recommend a more silent or uninhibited option, such as a bike or aircraft. But only take to the air if you're highly experienced and have a safe landing point. And be sure there are no zombies on board before you take off. Otherwise, you may end up in a deadly air battle that could cost you your life. What a mess. He should have taken a safer option. Atta boy, Billy. That concludes our first episode. You now confidently know the physical and psychological aspects of the zombie, basic weapon tactics for self-defense, and evade and escape strategies. Tune in next week when we'll discuss advanced weapon tactics for aggressive self-defense, stockpiling survival equipment, and lethal cures for the zombie bite. In the meantime, our nation is committed to communicating precise levels of threat to the community. So stay calm, stay alert, and if you see anything unusual, assess the threat and follow our emergency response procedures. Because your government is here to preserve and protect your best interests. Good night.